This is Twit. We're going to love our guest. We have Dr. Michael Summers. He is a professor mm -hmm. of physics and astronomy at George Mason University in Virginia, a planetary science who's a scientist who specializes in the structure and evolution of planetary atmospheres. He has his BA from Murray State University and MS in space physics from the University of Texas and a PhD from the California Institute of Technology in planetary science and astronomy. Dr. Summers, thank you very much for joining us. Oh, my pleasure to be here. Now, before we get into the reason why we have you here, which is a, a new book that you've written called uh, right. or co-authored called Exoplanets. It's Diamond Worlds, Super Earths, Pulsar Planets, and the New Search for Life <laughs> Beyond Our Solar System. I, I want to get a little bit of background about you. This, sure. this is a very interesting time to be in this field. The, the last right. three decades have seen this uh, our, our corpus of knowledge about the outer right. planets, about extrasolar objects, be turned on its head. What brought you into planetary science all those years ago? Oh, gosh. Um, well, I like to think that I became a planetary scientist when I was six years old. Um, my father got me a very small telescope, and, and I didn't have a clue what I was doing with it. But I lived out in the country so I could see the stars at night. And I took it out in our backyard and I set it up and just looked around to see what I could find to see. And there was a bright yellow star in the sky. And I pointed the telescope at it and you wouldn't believe it, but it was Saturn, the, the planet with rings. And, and you could see it. You could see a little globe there with little uh, sort of lobes on the side, which were the rings. And I was just stunned. It was just a discovery. I mean, I discovered Saturn and, and for myself because I didn't know what I was doing. And to think about a planet that I could see that was a tiny dot, but yet 90 times as, as big as the Earth, and that if you brought it here and set it right between the Earth and the moon, its, its rings would encompass both. And I was hooked. Um, and I mean, when I was a kid and a teenager, I built – larger and larger telescopes, um, up to a 12-inch telescope in high school. And then I went to college and I used their observatory. And then ultimately, I, I was so interested in planets, I wanted to find a way of getting into to, to space exploration and study planets um, with, with in-situ data, with, with uh, spacecraft robotic uh, instrumentation. And so uh, that's when I got interested in going to Caltech and JPL. <clears throat> and when I was there, I had just amazing opportunities to, to work on, on various space missions. Voyager 1 and 2 uh, had just passed uh, uh, Jupiter when I was doing my PhD thesis, so I, I was very lucky to, to get some first looks at the, uh, the data from the moons of Jupiter, and Io was pretty intriguing. So I did my PhD thesis on Io, and, and as far as I'm aware, I wrote the very first paper ever on supersonic meteorology, supersonic winds. Uh, on IO. And, and so that was kind of cool. Uh, not a lot of applications at the time. We, we have them now because we see lots of planets with supersonic winds. But at the time, that was kind of a first. And then uh, after Caltech, I, I got interested, well, actually, while I was at Caltech, I got interested in Pluto. So ultimately, I was involved in the, uh, the New Horizons mission to Pluto. I'm a co-investigator on that. I've, I've worked on Mars missions, Venus missions, uh, a variety of missions studying the upper atmosphere of the Earth and, and uh, the, the chemistry, thermal structure, radiation uh, of ozone uh, in, the, in the Earth's atmosphere. And uh, most recently, though, uh, like many astronomers, we've been uh, uh, sort of taken aback by what we found outside of our solar system, and that is extrasolar planets. So, you know, I mean, as you mentioned, the past you know, few decades, our ideas have been just turned upside down. And that's kind of an understatement, if you will, uh, because we, we were just so totally wrong. I, yeah, I mean, we really didn't have a clue. Let's talk about that, because th that is an interesting point. When I was growing up, mm -hmm. I, I was being taught a very certain order of the universe. Yeah. We, we mm -hmm. had it on, on good authority, uh, with, with, with some decent research, that all of the universe, all of our galaxy at least, had solar systems that were constructed like ours. We assumed that they were going to have inner rocky planets. We assumed that they would have outer gas giants. We assumed that they would be very similar to, to what we have in our own system. 
And that's right. turned out not to be the case. In fact, one of your yeah. fields of expertise, which is the study of chemistry and and the uh, the thermal factors on a oh. on a planet, has really contributed to us understanding that things are much much stranger in our galaxy than we thought. Yeah, uh, stranger, and and the reality is we really didn't know when when I was a kid when I was in graduate school we really didn't know if there were planets elsewhere. We guessed and we anticipated that based upon the laws of physics and what we saw in our solar system. But to see that there were planets elsewhere, but yet our solar system was not typical, what was there was two surprises. Um, the large number of planets elsewhere is a surprise. The types of planets elsewhere have, you know, continued to, you know, astonish us. And I think that was what led to, to our, our, our writing this book, is it's not just that the planets are different than what we see in our solar system. They're the whole new categories of planets. I mean, not terrestrial planets, not gas giant planets, not dwarf planets like Pluto, but whole new categories of planets and dozens of categories. And so, and, and we're just on the learning curve. I mean, we've, we haven't seen but just a, a hint at what's out there. At least that's what I expect.